No. No bus. A Jess B's book club. Um, I'm recording this right after the, the Country for Ghosts one, and I went and blotted, so I think it looks better. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about... Oop. This little beauty. Uh, Princess Body by Wong Sok Yong. Um, apologies. Um, this is a book that I found just through a random buy I was doing at the bookstore that I work at. Um, somebody had came in with like a handful of books and there were like two that I recognized that was like, yes, definitely. And there was like three that I was like, I don't know anything about this, but it seems really cool. Uh, this is one of them. I bought it for the bookstore and immediately um, took it home. Uh, and now I just read it. Uh, I just finished it today. And um, it took me a minute to get into it, but I really ended up liking it quite a bit. Um, knew nothing about the author going in. I'm like, yeah, criminally underread in, in Korean literature. Um, but I did some like looking a up stuff about the author and there's a good quote on there's a good couple of quotes from him on wikipedia uh, that i'm going to read um he apparently was um conscripted into the vietnam war under the japanese imperial army um and their quote from him there is what difference was there between my father's generation drafted into the japanese army or made to service imperial japan's pan-asian ambitions and my own Unloaded into, not, sorry, not under the Imperial Vietnam or Imperial Japanese Army. Yeesh, yeesh, a lot of words there that I fucked up, huh? Um, uh, um, um, and, and my own, continuing with his quote, uh, unloaded into Vietnam by the Americans in order to establish a Pax Americana zone in the Far East during the Cold War. Um, yeah, he see, apparently was part of like the a cleanup crew, which sounds like a really 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 miserable experience um in the book itself it mentions that he was imprisoned for five years for trying to set up um cultural exchange between north and south korea um that's like in the author bio right at the top of the book which is a very translated literature thing to do um because america is bad is bad <laughs> the united states specifically um yeah, and then the other quote that I saw, um, do, 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 this is um, presumably sometime after the 80s, um, because it's regarding the, the Gwangju uh, uprising, where um, a student-led um, group of people rioted in, in Gwangju and basically took over the entire city. Um, there's a very enjoyable movie i don't know if it's a good movie but I, I really enjoyed it called a taxi driver um that's sort of set in this um period there's i mean there's a bunch of, of of good film and stuff like that but that's the one that comes to mind immediately um but um yeah this is a historical moment in the 80 in 1980 where um people resisted a military coup um and were massacred for it um he um, um, <laughs> Sok Kyung Hwang writes or said at some point I fought Park Chung Hee's dictatorship I worked in the factories and farms of Chola I don't wait, yeah. and I took part in the movements of the masses throughout the country in 1980 I took part in the Gwangju uprising I improvised plays wrote pamphlets and songs coordinated a group of writers against the dictatorship and started a clandestine radio station called the voice of free Gwangju um these things endeared me to him quite a bit uh, at a moment when I was not sure exactly how I felt about this book. Um, the protagonist is a, a young girl named Body. Um, she is uh, born in North Korea in the late 80s. Um, the book takes place from, or it, like, follows her from North Korea to China, back to North Korea, in, and then to London. Um, she is named Bari after a Korean folktale um, about Princess Bari, who, I apologize about my pronunciation here, it's, it's going to be all bad, it's, it's going to be all bad, um, who, in this book and from the little other I've read on Wikipedia, is sort of a, 
a myth about um, the passage to death. Um, the sort of high level, as I understand it, is that Princess Body was the um, seventh daughter of a king and queen who had had six daughters before her. Um, they left her out to die, um, but she somehow survives. Um, I think varies based on the telling and the region. Um, the, eventually the king and queen get sick and they um, call for body to a princess body to find the life-giving waters. Princess body goes through a bunch of trials and tribulations, um, including uh, entering the underworld. And then at least in the version to this book seems to stick by um, princess body finds that uh, the life-giving waters were the right, the waters they used to cook rice all along. Um, she returns, and and then, again, this seems to vary in the telling, and I'm saying this based on basically no knowledge, but what I found on Wikipedia and a little cursory googling, um, she either resurrects the king and queen, um, saves them from dying in the first place, dies herself, uh, becomes a sort of divinity that is often associated, I think, with the... Um, passage of life to death, passage from life to death, or life to the afterlife, that sort of thing. Um, and this this body, the the one that is the main character of this book, um, sort of does a similar thing in the you know eighties, nineties, and two thousands. What this book does a lot is um, is talk about what makes refugees, how people live when they have been displaced, um, what makes borders. I think is a is a big part of it. There's a bit sort of near the like two thirds mark, I would say, where body wonders why do we have borders, and I think that might be sort of the central theme of this book was why do we have borders um i think the the largest figure in this book is hunger um i guess i should also uh, run it back a little bit and say that body um learns very early on that she has some sort of sorts of telepathy she is a, a shaman basically as described throughout the book um, she has a sister who is deaf and mute and who she learns at a young age that she can hear her sister's thoughts. Um, she eventually befriends a dog who is like the, also the seventh puppy as body as the seventh daughter in this telling as well, even though her parents are absolutely not kings and queen or king and a queen. Um, the seventh puppy she names Chilsung. Uh, and she starts to be able to talk to her, her, um, her, her dog friend. Um, it's very cute. Um, her grandmother is also a sort of person with the capacities of a shaman. Um, and the book sort of goes through her experience as a person who's been displaced constantly. Um, part of those experiences of being a shaman in this or her capacity to see ghosts and interact with them and one of the reasons i say that hunger is a sort of a central figure of this is that these are hungry ghosts um all the ghosts that show up ask for food ask to be fed talk about how hungry they are when they are fed they end up dispersing this is a big theme because you know um the passage to london that that body takes is like in a container ship um in the 90s um the late 90s probably i think it's around 99 um she's like illegally stowed on a container ship with a bunch of other people who are basically given no food this is her first sort of first more like second or third but like first really really big passage through hell um there are moments in which she is well fed that's sort of where hunger is not the driving force in, in her life that feel like the, the moments of possibility and all of these moments of possibility and this is the other big theme i think 
is actually solidarity. Um, it, I don't know that it gets sort of said out loud in the book, but there are so many moments where, um, you know, uh, her father is a person who does, um, does like international trade, I believe, um, for North Korea. And he ends up befriending this man named Uncle Salamander, um, Uncle Zhao Ling, I believe is, is his like proper name. Um, who's like a, a trade representative from China who comes through and like gives them food when they are starving during the, a famine in, in North Korea. Um, and even before, um, there is moments in like when she's in China where they they, they run into a farmer who feeds them. It's when these, these moments happen when someone else feeds her and her family, whatever her family looks like at that particular moment, where the possibility to live beyond um, survival and hunger um, open up. And that's where the moments where she is able to engage with her capacity as, as a shaman or to better provide for the people she cares for, including eventually her daughter and her um, grandfather-in-law. Um, they're the moments when people do things that are truly terrible are because they are hungry and and lacking in solidarity or are taking someone's solidarity for granted um yeah i feel like i feel like i really love <laughs> did i love this book I don't I don't know that I love this book. I think I think I found it very powerful in a way that kind of snuck up on me. Um and I again just finished it, so I don't know if that feeling will uh remain with me or will um sort of fade with time as as things as things tend to do. Um but I do know that I I came away from it feeling a lot more excited about it than I did maybe even like a third of the way through. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I have a ton to say other than to sort of want to articulate the fact that this is, um, I'm, I guess I will, I will sort of back up a little bit and say that, um, as I said, I'm criminally underread in, in Korean literature, um, in Korean literature and translation, obviously, but even Korean American literature, I think. Um, I mean, Teresa Hot Kyung Cha's uh, Dick Tees is probably my favorite novel of all time. Um, it certainly, it certainly is the most impactful um, piece of writing I've ever read, I think. Um, but the thing that actually this reminded me of more than that was another book from this year called Folklore by Angela Myung Hur. Um, that is about a woman who's like a, a post-grad or a graduate student who's in an Antarctic research station at the beginning of the book and sort of sees a vision of a woman who is like wearing a red scarf or tie. It's been, it's been a, the better part of a year since I read it. Um, I've read a lot since. Um, but that book, I mean, the title sort of gives it away, right? It's a Folklore is a portmanteau of folklore and forlorn. Um, it's, it sort of addresses this explicitly in the book of the weight of, of sort of history and and mythology on um, the individual, I think, is, is probably a good way to say it. Um, and I think this book, Princess Body by So Kyung Hong, does it very differently. Um, it could go into the same places... Um, Princess Bari could reject her sort of, like, um, nominal, uh, inheritance, right? But she never does, really. Um, and I don't want to, like, contrast them to say, like, that Folklore is, is a worse book in any way. Um, I think it has different priorities and is, um, has a sense of, I don't even think it's, like, yeah. It has a sense of solidarity to it as well, in my memory at least. But it's a very different kind. Um, it's a very different. It's a. It's less focused on on hunger and loss and the way that 
um, that borders influence those things and more on um, individuality and and um, the ways that we relate to one another mediated through things like language and culture and um, I guess primarily culture more than language maybe um, but again I'd have to reread it to, to, to speak to that more thoroughly um i would pull that book up but i'm pretty sure i gave away my um advanced read copy that i had um it's also a book that i believe i blurbed for the bookstore and didn't sell a single copy of but you know it is what it is um yeah i i guess that's a sort of the 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 bulk of my thoughts about princess body um a little a little slow to get into i had maybe some trepidations about it um a south korean author writing a north korean narrative feels like it could go uh bad um but also like i how would i even know like maybe it maybe it is deeply offensive in some way maybe it it has some ideological underpinnings that i'm like overlooking because I'm not super familiar and not obviously from and have no sort of familial ties or anything like that um but yeah from from where I'm sitting for right now at least I think I think I quite liked this book um and I think it's good because um no one who doesn't watch this would probably be able to find it anywhere because it's probably not exactly in print anymore it came out in like 2015 um and i doubt it i mean it doesn't seem to have won any major prizes or anything like that so uh good luck um yeah so no uh thanks for not watching